Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, we are uh, today. We are having our uh, one of uh, new programs that uh, uh, I think will help to understand the scene in the Middle East, and we are uh, also discussing uh, and following the developments. And as we know, the whole world is changing today, and. Uh, uh, and there are, you know, seismic uh, developments, uh, radical changes from globalization to the rise of China and Russia, global economic crisis and corona pandemic that affects everybody uh, globally. But also our region, the Middle East, what's called Middle East, is also uh, very, very much at the center of these developments, uh, plus we have, uh, you know, Arab Spring or what's called Arab Spring or Sawrat al Arabiya, and we have noticed the second round of, uh, you know, Qabla, uh, about uh, 10 years ago, but we also seen uh, maybe a lighter dosage of these protests and, you know, uh, also still a struggle from Algeria to Lebanon to Sudan and and some in Iraq also. There are, you know, many developments that uh, is caused uh, also uh, different uh, dynamics in the Middle East, uh, especially some proxy wars that we should mention, uh, plus uh, international attention to uh, to the region from gas to trade and to energy and strategic alignments, etc. Uh, and uh, along with other problems like unemployment, that is the brain drain that we see, you know, young people or many educated people seeking their fortunes outside and many other uh, developments going on uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the region. And, uh, uh, and we see uh, these developments affecting everybody. So uh, brain drain, poverty, and, uh, you know, politics also is kind of uh, limiting our abilities also to solve uh, different problems. And as Orsam, we are uh, following as Orsam Center for Middle Eastern Studies, following these developments uh, in the region. We are uh, area-based, area-focused uh, think tank uh, that is following the Middle East solely, but mostly the Arab world. And we are uh, starting a new uh, series of these more uh, known figures to, to make a bridge between uh, these uh, these uh, valuable figures and experience to to get to the both Turkish audience and Turkish public, as well as to the international uh, community. So we are having, uh, we are very honored to have uh, His Excellency Fuat uh, Signora. Uh, he's a former uh, Prime Minister of Lebanon, and we are very honored to have him with us. Uh, uh, his Excellency, uh, welcome, welcome to the program. Uh, and uh, he has, you don't, uh, don't need to, I mean, you all know him and he doesn't need the introduction. He has a very good experience. And as we know, Lebanon is at the heart of these developments from Eastern Mediterranean discussion to the, you know, the, the, the problems and the uh, crisis in Syria and in all the region in, in Lebanon, despite its size is very critical in all these calculations. And he is also, uh, you know, uh, both as uh, thinking, uh, he values to also not only politics, but he, he values the academic and intellectual communication between the different uh, aisles. And uh, we are happy to have him. Uh, and uh, we, uh, 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 Your Excellency, the, the, the floor is yours. And we welcome him uh, once again. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you, my dear friend. Thank you. Dear friends, good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me to speak at the Orsan Center for Middle Eastern Studies on the changing situation of the Middle East region and the prospects of cooperation and peace. Today, the world at large that is witnessing the, devast the, the, the devastating consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has caused the greatest economic, political, 
and social damage to, to humankind since World War II is still suffering from a serious phenomenon known as the trust deficit disorder. People feel troubled and insecure. At present, trust is at a breaking point. Trust in national and international institutions, trust among states, and trust in the rule-based global order. Moreover, within countries, people are losing faith in political establishments, polarization is on the rise, and populism on the mar is on the march. International resolutions are ignored, and cooperation among countries is still more uncertain as ever. As challenges are growing outward, many people are turning inward, and multilateralism is under fire at a time when what the world needs the most is a commitment to rule-based order. Dear friends, 10 years have passed since the outbreak of the so-called Arab Spring that transformed into a stormy winter time in some Arab countries, seriously undermining the stability, the economy, as well as the long-term prosperity of several Arab countries, namely Syria, Iraq, Yemen, Lebanon, Libya, and Sudan, were particularly affected. In the last decade, these countries witnessed major events and dangerous setbacks that eroded the power of the state and the rule of law, thus furthering the deterioration of their political, social, and economic situations. In this respect, the national state in these countries is effectively overwhelmed by paramilitary organizations and non-state actors that are subject to outside regional and international interference. As a matter of fact, over the past several decades, the Arab region has suffered from the continuous failure of many Arab states in tackling their socioeconomic and political problems. Moreover, some Arab states have failed miserably in managing and regulating their brotherly and friendly relations within the Arab region. These tragedies are unfolding in the midst of a growing Arab failure to play any vital role in determining the fate of the Arab region. Those troubling and serious imbalances in the region have encouraged both regional and global powers to use some Arab countries as a battlefield rather than a medium of cooperation. This led to a giving to giving some of the regional powers, including and especially Iran and Israel, a growing role in furthering the destabilization of the region, either by direct, direct aggression or by instigating internal conflicts, dissensions, and seditions in the countries of the region. In particular, the Islamic Republic of Iran is still heavily and stubbornly engaged in undermining stability and security in the region as it pursues proxy warfare and direct interference in four Arab countries, namely Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and Yemen. On the other hand, Turkey and the Arab world are bound by mutual interests as well as common cultural and historic roots that span centuries. The Arab region expects a positive and a constructive role to be played by Turkey, particularly in Syria and in Libya, on the basis of mutual respect and non-interference in the domestic affairs of each other. We are encouraged by recent developments emanating from the recent talks between Turkey and Egypt Hopefully, the fusion of tension and misunderstanding will favor an amicable resolution of crisis in Libya and elsewhere. Dear friends, the Palestinian conflict remains 
the oldest unresolved crisis in modern history and the most relevant in the Arab and the Islamic world. The recent realignment of UAE, Bahrain and Sudan in striking the Abraham Accord with Israel will not have a positive impact on the prospects of a long-term and sustainable peace in the Middle East, as long as the main issues in this eight decades problem are not resolved. Dear friends, today, several countries on, of the Arab region face alarming prospects of intractable conflict. The international community seems to have forgotten the Syrian people who rightfully fought to live in dignity and who paid dearly the cost of their uprising with blood, hunger, resentment, massive physical destruction and impoverishment. Millions of Syrians, almost half of the Syrian population have been displaced internally or forced to flee in desperation to neighboring countries. Security Council Resolution 2254 reaffirmed its strong commitment to the sovereignty, independence, unity and territorial integrity of the Syrian Arab Republic and called for an inclusive and Syrian-led political process that meets the legitimate aspirations of the Syrian people. In this respect, it is in Turkey's interest to actively seek an arrangement in Syria that puts an end to the forced displacement of Syrians and ultimately achieve peace and security along its southern border. As for Libya, it seems that the Europeans, together with Turkey and Egypt, are becoming increasingly interested in joining efforts, particularly as Egypt and Turkey seem intent on improving their relations. While the tragedy in Yemen has continued uninterrupted since 2014, persistent Iranian intervention in Yemen is a source of serious worry of further disorder in this country and the possibilities of spillover to other countries of the region. Nevertheless, there appears to be some good indications in view of the recent peace initiative proposed by Saudi Arabia, which was well received by major powers. As for the recent Chinese-Iranian strategic arrange, uh, agreement, and though it is still not clear what it may lead to, it is worth addressing the issue of the US shifting its attention to its domestic issues in trying to foster its internal national unity and to mend its relations with Western Europe and to concentrate on its great power rivalry with Russia and China. The Middle East seems to have lost its strategic significance for the US, while Russia has emerged as a strong regional player, particularly with its significant military presence in Syria. China over the past two decades has become the economic powerhouse of the region, becoming the number one economic partner of the GCC and Lebanon for that matter. The recent China-Iran strategic agreement may impart some political leverage to China's economic dominance. Though the past experience of the Chinese economic relations with some of the developing countries in Asia and in Africa was not that successful and did not help in materializing the expected benefits to these countries, I tend to think that China, as it is cultivating good working relations with all the parties concerned in the region, including Israel, Iran, and Russia, it may play a mediational role and may be well positioned to help with the reconstructive efforts. Dear friends, encouraged by some signs regarding the recent reconciliation among the Gulf countries, and the relative containment of the radical Islamic movements. I believe that the fragile and weakened nations of the Middle East should do their best to stay clear 
of the great power politics of the great power rivalry. In fact, the uncertainty of the superpower confrontation should encourage the local players of the region to minimize the regional tensions through active diplomacy and frank discussions of internal and regional security issues and to cultivate their long-term common economic interests. Dear friends, these conflicts are a clear and the present danger to peace in the region and beyond. Previous experiences teach us that wars don't always happen when both sides of the conflict want to go to war. Sometimes war forces itself on both sides of the conflict due to certain uncontrollable mistakes or unforeseen events. This is exactly why it is so difficult or almost impossible to predict the advent of war in this part of the world or when will peace prevail. Peace and stability will prevail when real, sincere, and serious efforts are made towards achieving fair and just solutions that take into consideration the common interest of these countries and the common interest of their people. I know that the younger generations in the Arab world are tired of tensions, fear, and wars. They demand real and effective solutions to the mounting problems they are suffering from so that they may live in peace and dignity under the rule of law. Dear friends, economic factors have always been a reason for waging wars, but also for building peace with neighbors based on common interests. It is estimated that by the year 2030, the population of the Arab world will probably reach about 600 million, the majority of whom are young and eager to develop their countries that are rich in natural resources as well as in human capital. Dear friends, in my opinion, the only way to establish strategic and sustainable security and stability in the Middle East is through strengthening the forces and elements of peace. This is only possible by marching ahead with great resolve towards reinforcing justice and full respect of the international resolutions. It's imperative that adopting inclusive policies in these countries will promote peace, stability, and they will support growth and progress. In this respect, I tend to believe that Turkey can play a very important and constructive role in contributing towards the prevalence of peace and stability in several countries of the region, particularly in Syria and Libya. Achieving this strategic and sustainable achieving this strategic and sustainable stability in the region can be attained by enhancing efforts towards greater cooperation and productive economic relations. Along these lines, let me suggest that serious efforts should be directed along the following three courses of action. One, con endorsing a two-state solution for the Palestinian conflict will respond to the needs of the Palestinians to have a sovereign and viable state and the needs of the Israelis for peace and security. Unless an effective plan guarantees the creation of a sovereign Palestinian state is reached, the empty promises given to Palestinians would result in a false hope that would only aggravate their frustration. Two, I believe that the Arab world has to make its position clear and firm in terms of standing up to Iran's interventionist policy in Iraq, Syria, Lebanon and Yemen, as well as to the continuing threats of its proxies in the region. At the present time, Iran is paying the, a heavy price in financial, economic, and political terms. Ultimately, Iran 
would need to address its mounting problems. In this regard, I believe that sooner or later, the politics of fatigue are going to set in the region. The various countries and particularly Iran cannot continue diverting resources away from its productive economic sectors and away from the pressing and growing and highly explosive needs of the Iranian people. The same applies to the people of the Arab, world, Arab region. As the Arabs should clearly be standing up to the threats of Iran and its intervention in the region, the Arab world should simultaneously and sincerely extend a hand towards Iran in response to every genuine positive gesture and friendly position expressed by Iran. Three, the empowerment of Arab moderates and secular forces in the region, which in return would call on the religious authorities to work on creating inclusive, conscious societies that believe in diversity, respect for others, and in peace. The diversity in the Arab world, the Arab countries, could enhance a new moderate secular system based on the respect and protection of freedoms and, and, religions, and, and religions. It has to be clearly stated, ladies and gentlemen and my friends, it has to be clearly stated that we need an approach that highlights the values of hard work, discipline, productivity, and also encourages critical thinking. We need a religious discourse that rises up to the level of our fast changing world. Uh, a discourse that is adapting instead of regressing and that opens the door to our new generations to be at peace with, with others through correcting the misconceptions about Islam that have been maliciously and systematically disseminated in the minds of our youth. An enlightened approach is urgently needed to address politically driven radicalization at home and xenophobia abroad. In brief, we do not want to scare the world, but we also don't want to be scared of it. The same way, destruction and evil are contagious, reform progress, reform programs and construction should also be contagious. My dear friends, all these goals seems to be far away than ever and not within our reach at present. The fact that they are difficult, elusive and challenging does not make it, uh, does not make them less right. It is a noble cause that deserves the collective effort of all parties concerned. It is our hope, our only choice, our only redemption. Thank you very much, my friends, for your listening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Prime Minister. And uh, honestly, you touched upon very serious uh, points that also haunt our region today from radicalism to a lack of unity and to also foreign interventions and uh, you know the uh, brain drain and uh, also i mean loss of compass in a way in the region uh, lack of leadership and i think we we should uh, focus on this as uh, the people of the region that uh, we 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 need to discuss more uh, such things. I think uh, yes. the, there is a, there is a gap between uh, between the two sides. Even though we live together for a long time, maybe like thousand years together, Turks, Arabs, and Kurds, even Iranians. But uh, especially you touched upon the uh, the negligence on Syrian people's uh, uh, suffering, still suffering, and. Uh, they, I mean, Libyans were in a, in a way lucky because they have oil and people pay attention to Libya, but Syria and Yemen, honestly, is, is in a very uh, dire uh, situation. 
And yes. uh, you suggested the, uh, the cooperation. And I think uh, the, if the people of the governments even, they think together, they can find a solution. But uh, generally the foreign uh, impositions, you know, or pulling in a way in one direction or the other is uh, get, making this uh, discussion and cooperation uh, harder. <coughs> yes. Yes, and especially the radicalization. And uh, I think uh, our youth uh, and how we can solve this radicalization problem, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, uh, especially when we have, uh, you know, these problems, these sufferings, do you think it's gonna get more aggravated, you know, worse? And, uh, you know, or we should uh, expect, you know, younger people, of course, we trust in their judgment, but uh, how you see it? Especially on well, and definitely, world. I see that. Uh, I mean, such such methods are are extremely essential and important, and at the same time, they are extremely difficult. The difficulty should not really uh, obstruct us from really exerting every possible effort and attempt to do such a thing. Because if we leave things actually without really trying to really solve these issues and these problems they are going to be uh, getting worse. And getting worse, it will, it will end up in wasting more resources and uh, losing lots of chances and opportunities for mean, mean, real cooperation among, among our countries. And keeping us busy with our little problems while the world is changing and changing fast. And actually we are uh, 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 facing more and more problems within and problems with the rest of the world. So these are, I think, a major challenges that we have to really look thoroughly into them and try to find out ways and means how to really address them. Uh, it is not actually, we are not going to be excused by our new generations if we don't attempt. If we attempt and we, we uh, we did not succeed, uh, at least we should always make new trials. It doesn't mean that what we, what we are uh, uh, trying to achieve is, uh, is unattainable or it's not correct. It is correct, but it is difficult. But the more we leave it without really trying to really solve it, it will become even more, more difficult. So this is, this is the challenge. And this is the thing that we have to really start looking out of the box, start looking how to really find solutions, start to accept the idea that we are different, but we have so many things in common. Let's try to see how we can make the common areas wider and, and larger. And the, 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 the uh, things that we disagree upon uh, uh, among each other about, about them, fine, let's set them aside. We are not going to, you see, you see, I mean, even if we read in the verses of Quran, huh, that God created, created us different, different, and we are not going to really be exactly similar to each other. We can become really a more cooperative and can solve our problems and based on mutual respect. That's the most important thing. We should not really get used to the idea that we should try to change our partners. They are not going to change. Time yes. will only change. Time will change them. It's not, it's not by, by mere intervention we can change. This is, this is something that we have to really accept. It, it, life has taught us so many lessons. Experience has taught us many lessons. And at the same time, our religion, our religion that, that we share together, command taught us many, many things that God, and I mean, and on doomsday will tell us how we became different. Yes, yes, he, I mean, he has said so, so many verses about this matter. That's what I really wanted to emphasize. And this is what we think that those who are in, in, in position to, to, to make a change, they should attempt to do and never to lose hope in achieving this. Yes, Your Excellency, uh, as the Quran also uh, 
orders you know when there is a conflict we are all humans we can make mistakes and they say if two two brothers or two communities you know uh, that are brothers and sisters fight we should uh, correct uh, or we should uh, exactly re resolve their problem and today we don't see any mechanism in the in the middle east or in the muslim world to to help these uh, except some uh, qabail yani, uh, or fil qabaili or uh, ashairi yes uh, but this is yes. a small scale why not we we do it you know larger scale yes i mean there, there, this is something something that mm -hmm. uh, you see uh, we have created created uh, certain mediums certain organizations that are supposed to really bring less let's, let's say the the countries of the middle east the countries in the islamic world together and try to cooperate together but they have never really done their job to the contrary they left things to, to really to deteriorate. I think the most important matter that really need to be looked at in this regard is the role that can be played by Turkey in this respect and by Iran. And I think Iran has some sort of, what do you call it, يعني, a, a way of talking freely and openly with the Iranians to find out where they are leading the world, where they are going, in what way actually they, 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 they think that they can change the Arab world. There is no way actually that the Arab world will accept the idea that Iran will put its hand on Iraq and in Syria. They are doing it at the same time now at the present time, but this can't continue. Instead of building this relationship on the basis of intervention, and actually interfering in the, those domestic affairs of these countries, and at the same time, creating more seditions within the, within the Islamic world. This doesn't help at all. It is time actually, because now actually the Iranians are thinking that they are going to have that this nuclear issue and what it really means. Tell me actually, let me tell you something. Pakistan has, has a nuclear bomb, isn't it? Yes. In what way this really helped much? Let's try to evaluate. Huh? In, not in much, what way much. this has helped actually in changing the life, North the life Korea might of have the Pakistani. Uh, uh, Prime Minister, maybe North Korea. And North, has, and North Korea. What has happened? How, how actually this has helped in bringing one more loaf of bread huh? at the table of every uh, of every Pakistani or every Iranian. Huh? In what way actually this can really help in building better relations of with or, or of Iran within within the within let's say the Islamic world or bet between its relations with Iraq. You see even even what's happening nowadays in Iraq in which uh, Iran now has the major the, the major influence. Yes. You see, they are now realizing that this is un untenable. It, it's unsustainable in the in the same in the sense that even in southern Iraq, there are lots of demonstrations against the Iranian presence over there. So this is not the way. Actually, it has high time to really think in in in, in new way. In a new method that can open the way for real cooperation, we are not going to change this this way as the Iranians think, and it is not by by enforcing enforcing a new way of of uh, relationship with certain certain groups within the Arab world that will change. It is not going to change this way. They are not going to really change the the let's say. The, uh, the distribution of the different uh, uh, sects of Islam in the, in, in the region. They are not going to do so, and they will not do it. So they are spending and la lavishing all sorts of spending on these matters that will end up actually wasting and burning money and burning efforts and wasting lives of people. Yes, unfortunately, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, uh, and when after the nuclear deal, Obama released, you know, about hundred billion uh, dollars for Iran's uh, money, but they wasted with the fighting in Syria and in Yemen and in others. And 
Iranian people did not benefit from it. Secondly, also, yes. uh, we, we need to, you know, uh, reduce the tension. Uh, I, I, I was uh, trying to tell the Iranians also, met, you know, several oppositions. I said, Iran is a big, co big country, you know, you should worry about, I mean, you should consider the worries of the Gulf, Gulf countries about uh, the intervention in the north and in the south and also with the size, you know, they, they are more worried that, uh, you know, with uh, organizing the Shias and militias, etc. these are not secret. So we, I, we, we, I, I tried to tell them, you know, I told them, but they yeah. didn't understand this in that time. Uh, you know, it is uh, not your interest that you are pushing them toward uh, Israel or to, toward America. Exactly. I mean, this is, I mean, if, if their objective is, is to really uh, reduce the influence of Israel, this is doing the contrary. If their objective is to really uh, uh, reduce the influence of the superpowers in the region, they are ending up with the, with the, with, with, with the contrary. So, I mean, if their objective is to, is to really improve the living standards of their people, it's ending up with impoverishing their people. This is, this is what's happening. Yes, unfortunately, this is very counterproductive. And it is, it's, Israel is one of the, maybe the most comfortable time they are living, you know. All the Arab world is, you know, kind of destroyed or kind of busy with their own problems and weakened and no leadership, etc. And they are very... Very relaxed, and that I think Trump administration uh, used that advantage to to push for more Israeli benefits from these, uh, you know, mess in the in the region. You think so, or? Uh... Yeah, and, and I think I think it's high time, high time for let's say, uh, I, I would say, uh, frankly, I would say that Turkey should really uh, uh, make make a very serious attempt to really start a new, a new policy in the region. First of all, mending its relations with the, with the rest of the Arab world. Second, trying to really, uh, 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 through mediation with the Iranians, talking sense to them in order to, to, to really create a new attitude uh, towards things. This is, this is something that will lead nowhere to the country. It will, it will end up in destroying, destroying each other, nothing more. Nor, nor the Arabs can make the Iranians Arabs, nor the Iranians can make, can make the, the Arabs Iranians. So this is, I mean, you have to, to really agree to it. And it is very important that we see how we can, we can cooperate together, how we can do this thing instead of wasting our resources in the way. And at the same time, we are going to face more and more pressures that will be exercised by the superpower. And they are looking for battlefields. For these battlefields, they want to really exercise their new weapons and their efforts and influences. And we will be actually the fuel for that. Nothing more, nothing more. Yeah. And they will end up actually after after uh, destroying the the, the, the the region. They will uh, they will lend us money to to exercise their colonialism, the 21st century type of colonialism. This is what's going to end up. Yes, I suggest. Uh, I, I suggest. I hope they understand. Yeah, I suggest that this is an attempt that should be made by by let's say by President Erdogan. Uh, uh, and I, I have great admiration for his leadership, for his piety, for his uh, good intentions. And I think he has to make this attempt. And I think he will be coronating his, his leadership with this, with this work, if he can really achieve something. I think the, I think he's trying, but uh, still there is a big big gap. Uh, that uh, definitely there is a need. This is you see uh, achieved. There is a more. I mean, a lot to do. Yeah, I mean, there is, yeah, failure uh, failure in in any in 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 certain attempts is is something that would would be, would be considered that the trials before success. 
So this is something we have to keep this in mind. Yes, yes. And there are several questions from the viewers. And yes, please. Uh, one, one about uh, uh, Corona uh, pandemic as uh, as also you think about you know the future and uh, how this Corona pandemic affect, of course, uh, I, I maybe cooperation or will it bring more uh, conflict uh, to the region and how it's gonna shape if if you see any kind of shaping effect for Corona pandemic? Well, actually this is going to change the economy of the world and so many actually behaviors. It has to really uh, be, be seen the influences in education, in, tra in, in travel, in tourism, in, uh, in, uh, in many industries, the types of services are going to change. So this is something that uh, uh, we are only seeing the tip of the iceberg of this. Huh? Yeah, I mean, actually, so, so you see this uh, as, as a major, you. major factor. I mean, not a oh, temporary. Definitely a major factor. Yeah, I mean, my friend, had it not been for this, for this, uh, uh, let's say, pandemic now that has that is now about uh, eighteen months. Uh, uh, yeah, since since it uh, since we started to to see its effects, uh, uh, now we can see more of certain types of inventions. This zooming actually became very valuable in, in this respect. Mm -hmm. Office work has changed considerably. Many, 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 many corporations now even uh, are using uh, uh, this, this new systems of, of uh, let's say, communication, which is going to really affect us a great deal. So it is, it is with this thing in mind, we have to, to, to work hard in order to uh, thinking uh, yani, with great vision about how we should react, how should we deal, and in what way we can adapt our economies to, to benefit from this. These, these matters, you say, have to uh, really uh, uh, influence us in order to really type, the type of education has to, has to change. And there is no replacement for going to school. There is no replacement of going to universities because you see even yani, the students, whether they are pupils or students at the university, uh, education is not, is not only by reading a book, actually com com communicating with people and sitting with them and talking with them is 50% of education. Uh, so so the, these, the these young matters, generation will, will miss that, that point. Yes, that point. yes, yes. So these, these also, are things, these are things yes, we, have, also, sir, we have to think of. Yes. Uh, yes, do you also expect uh, the gap between the rich in the world, I mean, and, uh, and the poor will increase or will a little bit tone down because of uh, Corona? Hello. Uh, the, the gap between the haves and the have not has widened all over the world. Yes. And these are matters that need to be really discussed and thought of how to really reduce that gap without affecting productivity, without affecting, let's say, incentives and, uh, and uh, ways how, how to, to create growth. But uh, this, this thing would, would, need, would need actually to create more education to our, our, uh, our students in order to adapt them to, to this, these new technologies. So uh, this is a real challenge to all regarding uh, the, the widening gap. And has, this has to be bridged in one way or another. Huh? Yani, uh, uh, countries uh, uh, among the, uh, in, in the world, probably the gap has been reduced among countries, but within countries, no, the gap has not been reduced, and this should be really uh, addressed and addressed quickly, in order not to create more, more frustration within, and more uh, conflict within countries. Yes, uh, Doctor Watik Saadun from uh, Iraq, and he's an expert in uh, in the, in the center, asking. Uh, how you read the future conditions of Lebanon? 
how you see politically, economically, and security-wise? Well, in Lebanon, we are passing through extremely difficult, difficult times. We have practically the dominant influence of Iran. And as you know, uh, that Hezbollah, when it was established after 1982, it was established on the basis that uh, uh, it is supposed to really uh, have one objective of driving the Israelis away out, out of Lebanon after they occupied Lebanon in 1982. And this has continued over a long period of time. There was some sort of an acceptance to what you call it, to the, uh, uh, the weapons being held by the Hezbollah on the basis that it is supposed to really be used solely for the purpose of driving the Israelis out of Lebanon. The Israelis withdrew from Lebanon in the year 2000, in May 2000. And uh, from that time, the actually the objective of the weapons of Hezbollah has turned out to be not against the Israelis, but for the purpose of serving the objective of the Iranian uh, government and the Iranian uh, and Iran. And in spite of the fact the, the Lebanese uh, really uh, wanted to, to have some sort of a, a, a clear and honest discussion how to really make some sort of a strategic agreement regarding the weapons and how ultimately the weapons will have to be in the hands of the state and not in the, in the hands of the political groups and mainly Hezbollah. And this has been actually extremely made clear after the taking over of Hezbollah of Beirut and many other parts of the country in the year 2008. And from that time, Hezbollah is in full control of the country. And at the same time, at the same time, using Lebanon as a platform for intervention in the Arab world. So that's why they, in the year 2011, they extended their influence and, and military intervention in Syria and in Iraq and in Libya. And not only that, even in, even in Kuwait and in many other countries. This has made really Lebanon practically uh, 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 under, the, under the influence and where the delicate, let's say, balances uh, 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 and equilibriums within the country be distorted. And the relationship of Lebanon within, within the Arab community and in the world command has been distorted. And in fact, this has resulted itself in, in, in greater problems for Lebanon. From, two, from the year 2011, from the year 2011, and after a period of unprecedented growth in the country in the years 2007, 8, 9, and 10, things have been deteriorating uh, uh, rapidly and, uh, and in, 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 in a disappointing manner whether in terms of growth, in terms of deficit, in terms of balance of payment deficit, all these matters has resulted in such a situation. And where the uh, Hezbollah has managed to strike a deal between uh, himself, between uh, Hezbollah, and with the candidate to the presidency, uh, 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 Major uh, Michel Aoun, who became a president. After what? After uh, 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 the country was not able to elect a president. We stayed without a president for two and a half years. And from that day, things are becoming very difficult in which uh, on, he is thinking now of getting his son-in-law to become the future president of the country on the basis of being supported by Hezbollah. And as you know, you see, God has taught us a very important lesson that, that he says, if there are two gods in the world, it will be get, get bad. As I remember from my father used to say, two captains in one ship, they will drown the ship. That is the thing what we are having now. And we are 
an uninformed government because Hezbollah wants to, 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 to keep Lebanon as a hostage in the hands of the Iranian uh, Islamic Republic in its forthcoming uh, uh, negotiation with the, with the United States. This is the situation what we are suffering and Lebanon now is undergoing a major collapse in practically everything. Our currency has depreciated by more than 90%. And this, you know, has greater impact on, on uh, 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 yeah, also standards and inflation that, that is hyperinflation now and uh, on, the, on the security situation as well and the political situation. So this, this matter actually, Lebanon is suffering a great deal. And as you know, Lebanon has been undergoing a major, a major uh, and a difficult period starting in 1975. This is a country that has suffered a great deal since 1975. We have uh, been exposed to lots of uh, Israeli invasions. We had an invasion in 1978, Israeli invasion. In 1982, in 1993, 96, and in 2006. Yani not a single country in the world can really sustain itself to really withstand the pressures of having five wars in, in such, a, in smart, such, such a short period. And maybe, at the same maybe time- Iraq, Maybe Iraq, sir. It's also a very dire situation. You see, I mean, again, I mean, I mean, uh, again, I'm I mean, all countries they suffer, you. Yeah. but but you see, in 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 a country like Lebanon, that that depends its economy and its people on the types of services that they provide. They don't have oil. They don't have other natural resources. Our natural resources are our people, and that is entirely different. This is, I mean, in, in instability is against our type of economy. Our type yes. of economy dependent on stability rather than instability. Yes, very enlightened. I, I visited Lebanon several times. You know, I love Lebanon. They deserve, you know, a lot better and very beautiful. Very educated people also. Very, yes. you know, uh, hakim <clears throat> and with wise uh, people. And also trade-wise, you know, trade and tourism <clears throat> is, a, is a big sector <clears throat> that are affected by these uh, skirmishes and crisis etc yes. uh, honestly this uh, hurts, hurts the country and uh, dr tahir al bedawi from sudan he is asking uh, i mean related to the militias how we can reduce the domination of the role of these armed militias in the region uh, this is the, uh, as i said actually most of these militias are dependent on let's say their influence on certain take sectors. Time, take, take your time, sir. So I, I maybe mention just to, to, to get you a little bit relaxed on the throat. Uh, and uh, one example <coughs> I always use, uh, when, when we, are, we were small, uh, you know, sometimes the teacher would, uh, would hit the uh, small uh, children. Uh, sometimes uh, students, I mean. Other times he doesn't want to hit them. He says, uh, you know, beat each other, yes. beat each other. <coughs> beat each other, yes. So, yeah, yes. So this is the yeah. Mu'allim. And uh, yes, we, uh, we say, yeah. Mu'allim, yeah, and, uh, actually, sometimes we in the region, we forget. There is a Mu'allim, there is a teacher that wants us to, to fight each other, but not because we want it, but sometimes we get so much into the uh, action that we forget about the yeah. Mu'allim. <laughs> From for about the teacher and yes, there's yes. always teacher watching and enjoying from from distance. Yes. Yeah, you see, I mean, the, the, this is this is the way how to really divide and rule, as they say, isn't it? Uh, they yes. divide. That's that's what is really happening. This reminds me. This reminds me actually of. Uh, one important uh, little, little story in, in Arabic history, when, uh, when Ziyad ibn Abi uh, was sent by the Umayyad uh, Caliph to Kufa, and he, he stood there 
and uh, he he threatened the people of Kufa by saying, "Wallahi la ajalna li kulli wahid min kum shughlan fi badani." I would I would like to uh, I'm going to busy each one of you in himself, and uh, so that he wouldn't really think of doing anything else because he is really afraid of being be, being uh, uh, يعني, uh, hit by by, by 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 the ruler there. Anyhow, what I want to say in this regard is that these militias are being supported either by by certain sectorial uh, 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 hopes of certain people, yeah, either sectorial sectorial influences or because of uh, uh, regional regional interference in the domestic affairs of, of Lebanon, and uh, this, in fact, uh, uh, is becoming why we are reaching a dead end in Lebanon. That. There is no way we can we can get out of this situation if we don't manage to unite the country. Mm -hmm. You see uh, that what really uh, we have managed to do in the year 2006 during the invasion of Israel to, to Lebanon. Everybody in the world has seen the the the, the Lebanese united together among themselves against the Israeli aggression. Although this, this, uh, this aggression that was made by Israel in 2006 was instigated by a certain uh, 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 incident that was committed by Hezbollah along the, the border with Israel. But nevertheless, we managed to keep the unity of the, of the people. But immediately after that, Hezbollah spoiled the, the whole thing by creating more seditions and more differences among the Lebanese that resulted with the, with the present situation. It is well known nowadays that as long as the, the situation in the country is being run by the militias rather than by the state, there is no way actually we can get rid of our situation. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, it is the state that has to be in charge the 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 honest, the impartial, the 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 uh, uh, the the uh, I mean, the 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 state that takes care of all its people without any differentiation. I think this is the way how to deal with the situation. People are getting more and more, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, in, convinced of this. Nevertheless, nevertheless, Hezbollah is not. And he is pushing every every effort in order to keep the country uh, displaced in, the, in, in such a manner. That's why we we, we believe that uh, uh, the situation now is unable to, to produce a government, the government that that uh, is not similar to the types of governments that were formed in the past, which at the end of the day did not allow the the. The what you call it, the forces of democracy, to to uh, take its role. And as you know, in in democratic, uh, in par parliamentary democracies, at the end of the day, it is it is a democracy that prevails in the way that there is the 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 government and the opposition, and it works in a sense that to set things in the right course. But when we have started to adopt the, the, the system of what you call it, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the coalition governments, in which all the people in the, in the parliament are represented in the, in the government, then the forces of democracy are not taking action at all. They are not because they cover each other and at the same time, they make deals uh, and, uh, and uh, really exchange benefits together, it ends up at the, at the expense of the state and at the expense of the people. So this is what is going on. And this is not, there's no way that that is, can be considered as a sustainable proposal.
Yes, uh, uh, Your Excellency, we are about to wrap up, but we have also several questions uh, about how the, you know, for those, especially in Turkey, uh, we know the Turkish uh, Syrian part, but we don't, uh, maybe uh, the, uh, the general public may not know much uh, about how the Syrian crisis affected, especially Professor Murat Aslan is asking, affecting in the beginning also today with uh, these conflicts plus these Caesar sanctions on Syria, how is it affecting Lebanese economy? Well, it's affecting very much actually. Lebanon is, is very unfairly treated, you see. Probably we have, we have as much or a little bit less of Syrian refugees as much as Turkey. But Turkey is 80 million. Lebanon is, is 5 million. Room, so, room for digestion we have. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have, we have something like, like, uh, uh, yani, like 25% of our population are, are Syrian refugees. And they are living in, in, uh, in very difficult situations. And at the same time, uh, uh, things in Lebanon are becoming uh, uh, very difficult. That it is, uh, what is what is left actually of resources in the country cannot really feed the, the, the existing number of Lebanese. How to feed actually the Lebanese and the Syrians and together with, with the Syrians or with the, with the Palestinians. So this is Lebanon is really passing through extremely difficult times and is un, unable to, 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 to do anything. Secondly, is that Lebanon, it's, it is uh, yani, from all sides, it is neighboring Syria. And the instability the, and the unstable situation in Syria reflects itself badly on, on Lebanon. And our relationship with the rest of the Arab world in terms of exports, in terms of, uh, of transportation, in terms of really communication with the rest of the world actually moving by car, by 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 any by any any any, any means, it, it has to go through Syria, and as as long as Syria situation is bad, definitely it reflects itself in on our exports, un, unable to export our our agricultural products and our industrial products. So these are matters that are influencing Lebanon a great deal, and this is uh, yeah, yani burdening Lebanon with the great influences negative influences yes. and that's why actually the whole the whole situation the whole economic situation is very bad and the living conditions are are, are, are bad uh, and this plus, might, plus, might tell, yes plus this that, might carry uh, uh, with it certain security security issues yes yes uh, despite i mean uh, in addition to that we also had the huge explosion in the port uh, yes, and this and... Uh, this exclusion on the port is something that is, uh, I would say, very fishy. Very fishy in 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 bringing this shipment uh, seven this years much, ago. This big amount, Rasa. Because see, let me tell you, Ahmed, uh, if you want to Im Im import one kilogram of ammonium nitrate into Lebanon, you need a prior written approval from the Council of Ministers. Nevertheless, it was imported in 2013 in a very fishy way. The, 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 the ship landed, the, 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 uh, it, it sailed and landed in Lebanon uh, in, in that year and put the shipment was put in the, in the hangars. And at the same time, uh, lots of, lots of uh, things have been going on to the point that at least 80% of the shipment were withdrawn without the knowledge of the authorities and who got them, God knows because all the estimates about the, the size of the population the size of the explosion is, is the result of 20% of the ship, we are talking about 2,755 tons of ammonium nitrate it's not a joke of, of the concentration of 34.7 concentration. Uh, this, this is un, 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 yani unexplained in terms how they were taken, by whom, 
this tells that the, the, the parties that were behind this are not uh, yani only merchants. These are yes, either, yes. either countries, states, as well as military or militias. Yeah, yeah. And this is how. Sir, do you expect a kind of a clear investigation? Who was responsible and who, who, who did and why he didn't uh, even neg neg let me tell you. Let me tell you the second day, the second day uh, uh, of the explosion on the 5th of August, uh, myself and, uh, and two of my colleagues, the uh, former prime minister, they asked for. Uh, a, 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 an international investigation, if I, if a, a, a fact-finding mission by the United Nations in order to to actually, because all actually all what really re released to us and by immediately I mean we know that I know was I was a prime minister and I know that if I if one 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 wants to import one kilogram of ammonium nitrate he had to go through the 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 uh, the, 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 the Council of Ministers. So the minute that we, we realized that there was 2,755 2, tons of, of ammonium nitrate, then immediately our conclusion that there is behind it certain groups. And this is why it requires uh, an investigation. Now, eight months have passed and we are unable to, to find out who was behind it. Who was behind it? That's why I believe we are not going to reach anywhere unless that a, 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 what you call an international investigation is 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 really uh, mandated. Yes, sir. Uh, French President Macron visited Lebanon two times after the explosion. But yes. what role the French any contribution to the well-being of Lebanon? Uh, well, uh, uh, President Macron uh, has. So you yes. Emerge asking. Yes. Yeah. Have, President Macron has uh, has uh, has visited Lebanon twice, and he met with uh, with uh, representatives of all the major the major parties in Lebanon. And in fact, in the first visit, in the first visit, he went immediately to the place of the explosion, and uh, he met with the people, with young men and women, and he listened to them, and he came to the conclusion that they really want. A different type of government, a, go a government that is is manned by, uh, uh, let's say, uh, 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 certain certain knowledgeable persons and well respected and, and independent and non-partisan, uh, so that can really start uh, dealing with the issues, with the problems, particularly with the need actually to carry on the necessary reforms in administration, in economy. In finance, in 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 the, in the various things that has to do with running the government and having proper governance within the, within within the government, so that's why he came with the conclusion and he discussed it with with the people uh, and uh, the representative of the various parties in his second visit, and he suggested to them that the most important thing is to have a group, a new group, headed by a prime minister that should form a government of, of people who are technocratic, but I mean, well, well success, successful in their fields, you see. Uh, we don't want to get uh, people who are not successful. We have to get people who are knowledgeable and successful. So that's what he proposed. And at that day, all, the, all, the, all of them, they supported this idea. But again, I mean, two things have happened. The Americans started their, their sanctions against Hezbollah people and, and the rest. And second is that the intentions of Hezbollah on the one hand and the intentions of the president about his, his, his aspiration of getting his son-in-law to, be, to become a president has made all sorts of obstacles to the formation of such a government, whereby they want to really repeat the types of governments that have already failed in Lebanon and did not. President Macron has, has proposed his, his initiative based on what he has learned from the people. He really uh, developed that proposal on that basis and he has submitted this proposal. 
And from that day, they are really uh, 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 making all sorts of obstacles against that. And up till now, there, there doesn't seem to be a way out of that situation up till now. Let's see what will happen. Tomorrow we will be receiving the foreign minister of Egypt and then the representative of the Arab League. And there are some talks about uh, uh, the, uh, the delegated prime minister, Mr. Hariri, is going to really visit the Vatican uh, because the Vatican is supporting the initiatives that are being made by the, by the Maronite patriarch who has been asking uh, uh, for quite some time that was uh, the, a, a non-alliance type of governments in Lebanon and, uh, and at the same time uh, uh, to see if, if an international conference can, can be held. Anyhow, you see, so this, the, the this suggestion, matter, sir, the, the, the Maronite uh, patriarch suggested a kind of neutral government, which is away, away yes, from certain neutral government. proxy Proxy roles no, and, uh, not, not actually representatives of the various parties. You yeah, there, there was a question about uh, this. I was going to ask you also, maybe mix with that one. This confessional system is getting obsolete and useless now. Is it the discussion that uh, maybe make people tired? You know, uh, and see. Solution? Let me tell you. If we look at the the Taif agreement, actually. Uh, uh, we don't have a religious government. We, our, 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 uh, our system, our constitution is a civil state government. But it is actually momentarily, it is based on what you call it division uh, on the basis of, of, of uh, uh, Muslims and non-Muslims and, non and Christians. Uh, and this in fact, 50-50 on that basis. But it really means the constitution is the Muslims to get the best that they have and the Christians to get the best they have to really to for government posts and for uh, the, for the political posts. What has been going on is that each one of them is bringing the, the worst that they have rather than the best that they have. So this is the problem that Lebanon is facing at the present time. What is, what is important, it is not the mistake of the constitution or the system by itself. It is the way implementation is taking place is wrong. This has been going on for quite some time, since 1989. And what really happened in that, it is because at that time from 1989 until 2005, the thing was, was really uh, uh, run effectively by the Syrian presence in Lebanon. And the Syrians, they, they implemented a system in which, let's say the best example, the best uh, description can be given to it is what, you, what, you, what do they call it in French, Pyromane Pompier, which in fact, it is like engaging a fireman to put off the fire and he himself makes sure not to put off, not to extinguish it completely, but to extinguish it in a, in a certain manner so that he keeps the, 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 the fire still on whenever he wants and it interests him and it's in his benefit, he can ignite it once more. So this has been going on for some time where the Syrians, they were playing one, uh, one against the other. And in fact, after 2005, the, the role that was played by the Syrians, the Syrian regime, now it's being placed by the Iranians through Hezbollah. This is the problem that we are having. It is not the problem of the system. It's not the problem of the constitution. That is what, what the patriarch two days ago has said one of the most important speeches uh, 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 that he has been saying for some time that it is not the problem of the constitution. It is the problem of the implementation that is against the interest of Lebanon. Thank you. Uh, this was the question from Dr. Ismail Sari. Uh, and Dr. Kurshad Astan also was mentioning uh, mm -hmm. that uh, Lebanese tourism was doing very well in, before the corona. Uh, yes. And also 
and uh, this advantage is now uh, uh, gone or uh, reduced. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mehmet Alaja also asking the Saudi role as the last question uh, uh, in, in Lebanese politics and how to get out of, I mean, you answered the partly on this, but if you want to add more. Yes, uh, yes, I can, I can, can answer get, that. Get this out of this pulling from different sides. Yes, you see, yes. let me tell you, let me tell you. Saudi Arabia and the Gulf countries, they have been really extending support to Lebanon throughout in all the problems that we, we passed through and we experienced, they stood to our support. That what really happened in 2006, to give you an example, when Saudi Arabia and the rest of the, of the Gulf countries, they supported Lebanon to overcome the damages of the war towards extensive damages that Lebanon experienced. The thing is that uh, Saudi Arabia and the Gulf countries and all the friends of Lebanon, they have been insisting on the Lebanese government that you should really carry on a process of reform. And let me tell you something in here. I have experienced this when I was a minister of finance and I experienced it when I was a prime minister in which I came out with lots of programs of reform into the country. I managed to have some pass through, but the rest, there were lots of objection and obstacles were planted in the way so that we were not able to carry on the necessary reforms for our economy, for our administration, for our budgets, and for our, let's say, financial situation. So that is, in fact, the, 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 all the Arab countries are asking the Lebanese. And in fact, there are lots of populist, populist politicians in the country. They don't dare to face the people and tell the truth. You see, this is what it makes the difference between politicians and statesmen. Both of them, they both of them, they do politics. They this is their business, politics. But the, prep, the difference between a, a statesman and the, and the politician, a politician goes to the people, try to convince them of something. If, uh, if the, he, he doesn't really find the listening ear, he will do what do they want. A statesman, he goes to the people asking them or trying to convince them to do something. Probably they are not listening it or they are not agreement. He tries to find all ways and means this way, that way, in any other means in order to really carry the necessary change. So that's what we have been, we have been uh, really experiencing bad politicians throughout the past period. And this is where we stand up now. The problem with Saudi Arabia is saying that we are ready to support Lebanon, but you have to execute your, and try to implement your, your reform programs. But at the same time, how do you want us to help you when Every day, every day, your people are not only, I mean, Hezbollah and the rest of, let's say, parties who are influenced by the Syrian regime are using Lebanon as a platform to uh, fight and to attack Saudi Arabia and other countries of the region. And not only in terms of really uh, uh, writing articles, they are sending actually groups, huh? terrorist groups actually into where? into Yemen and fighting Lebanon and in Syria and in Iraq and in Kuwait. It's not only one thing uh, that that is what really makes the Saudis saying that you should really try to have a government that represent the people who can execute the reforms and we are ready to support you. But as long as you are not really doing the reform and as long as you are continuing your uh, 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 destructive policies are destructive, uh, uh, let's say, behavior of Hezbollah, Hezbollah uh, groups in Syria and in Iraq and in Yemen, how can we help you? Lebanon at the end of the day, Lebanon at the end of the day, يعني, uh, it has to, uh, as, as Aristotle once said, know thyself. Lebanon has to know itself, what it can, what it cannot and how it can, uh, let's say, uh, uh, let's say, manage its affairs in a manner that 
is helpful to Lebanon and to the, 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 the Lebanese in the diaspora. The Lebanese in the diaspora, they are actually, we have a great number of Lebanese working in, in the Arab countries. How can All we continue the way to Latin America, having, yes, you have a lot of- Yes, uh, in Latin America, diaspora. in the States, we have, we have, my friend, we have two times our population in Lebanon, in Brazil alone. Wow. In Brazil alone. How can we do, do that and why we are fighting the world with this? This is unhelpful, particularly that Hezbollah is using Lebanon as a platform. Platform yes. to export ter terrorists from Lebanon to operate in, in, in several countries. This is, this is the problem that we are facing. Yes, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, also, uh, I mean, why Lebanese uh, people are successful outside uh, and not given the same chance in uh, inside? Then, yes, that's, yeah. that's an important thing. You see, yes. that's, in fact, uh, 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 the thing is that when they are settled in Lebanon by certain considerations, factional, uh, sectorial, and... Uh, and uh, uh, let's say these differences do affect the, Le the, Le the Lebanese. When, when the Lebanese are actually liberated from these influences, you will find out very important stars all, all over the world. Many Lebanese are quite successful. Uh, yani, uh, in, in, when we in, listen to Fayrouz, we don't worry. Yes, I mean, in every or, aspect. It's not only, in, I mean, stars, I mean, not only stars, I mean, in artists, no. Stars in, 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 in business, in politics, in, 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 uh, in art, in, uh, in medicine. I mean, the Lebanese in the diaspora are quite successful. So, yani, uh, 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 sometimes people do say the Lebanese are fingers, not a hand. They are fingers, not a uh -huh. hand. Huh? Well, this is might be partly true. Okay, but I I, I noticed that the the situation uh, similar, uh, somewhat people are uh, tired of sectarianism, confessionalism, or uh, you know these essentialist uh, divisions that you cannot choose, you cannot or create a barrier. I think people try to I I notice in Iraq and in many other parts. They all, even ideological conflicts that it also keeps us busy with the, you know futile futile discussion not only in you know you see this Lebanon, is something in the Arab world overall Islamists versus secular and all, I mean we are all this is, uh, citizens. This is something exactly, Ahmed. We have to learn it well that all let's say citizens they have to be treated equally without any any, let's say, uh, uh, neglection or uh, marginalization of any segments or any, any groups. And they have to be treated evenly and fairly by the law and all they have to be treated as such. Religion is, your, I mean, particularly in Islam, as you know, Ahmad, uh, Islam is a religion between a person and his God. And I believe that the most recent, the most recent, let's say, uh, 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 any document that was produced, first of all, between between uh, uh, the the the, uh, the the Pope Francis and and uh, and the Sheikh Al Azhar of, uh, of 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 Egypt. Uh, in the, uh, uh, the 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 document regarding about uh, about fraternity uh, uh, among among people in, that was signed in uh, in Abu Dhabi and before that it was signed in 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 Egypt. This is something that we have to learn how to build our societies on the basis of really religion is something that is between you and God and you do whatever you want, this is your right. But at the, on other, other matters, you are to be treated fairly and equally by, by, by the law of, by, 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 
by, by, by the rule of law and, uh, and law and order. These are the things that we have to get back to, to realize. And that's why I said in my last, last uh, course of action that I, 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 I tried to, pre to repress that it is very important to look into these matters so that uh, we, we build our societies on the basis of, of uh, really bringing national unity among the components. The, uh, the Pope, John Paul II, in 1997, when he came to Lebanon, he sent his quite important message to the Lebanese that you are not a nation, you are a message to the world. And he meant by this a message of respecting diversity. So again, I mean, I mean, I, I, as far as we Muslims, he said that he, God said, said to us that you are, that God created you differently. In a day, I mean, you are different and you, you will know how God is going to treat you uh, on, 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 on doomsday, that's something else. But uh, our says we are different. We have to respect each other and respect the diversity. Respect us that you are, I am different than you. We have to respect me. That's, that's the thing. Otherwise, this is an endless process. If we don't really try to build this and really uh, be firm in our commitment to this, to this concept, we cannot really improve our societies and improve our our future to our new generations yes yes yeah, honestly i mean this is the uh, hikmah or the wisdom we need and we have it in our tradition we lived with the christians and muslims for a long time during the amavi time and abbasid and the ottomans you know we we live together we managed to they bring together Muslims, the Jews, and the Christians. Yes. Now we, now we are like struggling to to live uh, among us. I mean, this is like a, See, like in, a in, joke. In in uh, in, uh, in, Andal in Andalusia, they they really developed a term, a term that is important about the living together. It's called convivancia. Mm -hmm. It was really formed that that. Uh, Convivancia, the living together. In, in, yes, in, we have in, it, we have it. Yeah. We have it and, you know, we, we managed to uh, bring uh, many religions together. Now we are uh, even, you know, uh, uh, having difficulty to live among different qabail, well, uh, different mazahib, different uh, yeah. sects and, and stuff. And we should work on it. And uh, honestly, uh, this wisdom uh, from you and from uh, you know, experienced uh, academicians, intellectuals, politicians. I think you need uh, to serve more and to be listened uh, to more. And we are very happy to have you uh, here thank with you. us. And also, I want to thank the, our technical team, plus uh, some questions that you already answered from Hassan Basri Ulujan and Furkan Gumush and other uh, viewers. And honestly, we, we need uh, your... Uh, your vision uh, to to have this communication to to solve our problems uh, among ourselves, not expect others to solve it, and others will not solve it. I'm I'm sure about. No, my, they, they would not. If we don't my, solve our problems, nobody will solve us. Nobody will we solve, will solve it, our yes. problems. Yes. yes, we should solve our problems, and this cooperation and the title I think is very also telling. Uh, for uh, we need uh, more room for cooperation and need for cooperation to achieve a peace inside and even outside, you know. Uh, and uh, well, well appreciate your, your contributions today. And thank your, you. Our, uh, our guests. Thank you, Ahmed, uh, for you and for the, all the participants. I wish uh, that it was uh, a quite uh, uh, an inspiring uh, discussion. And I will be sending you uh, uh, the complete text and, yes, uh, please, and please, the abridged yes. text. Uh, we'll be we'll translated and to also yes. to, to publish it in Turkish and uh, uh, I will provide a yes. good background for uh, future negotiation and cooperation. And, uh, and send me actually yeah. the the uh, the video of uh, of this uh, of this meeting. Definitely, okay? definitely, definitely, sure, sure. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. I, I really appreciate my best regards, and, everybody. Uh, and if you um, can convey my 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 regards to the president, the president Erdogan, that would be great.
Thank you very definitely, much. Definitely, definitely. Uh, have a nice day, sir, and uh, thanks for Same the Same to you and to also. everybody. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. We'll keep in touch. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear audience, and we'll so, uh, come in a different program right. style like this in the future, near future. Thank you. Inshallah. 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 Uh, Sidir Karim. Shukran.